Elder G. A. Smith requested the prayers of the saints, as he did not expect to preach when he came here this morning. The intelligence we received directly from our Heavenly Father in answer to prayer is calculated to guide, direct, and lead us in the path that we have undertaken to travel. He compared the present improvement in this valley to the time when he first entered it as a pioneer, when it was inhabited with innumerable hosts of large black crickets and few half-starved Indians. It appeared to him a miracle. Ancient history has no parallel to such an undertaking as we have accomplished, and it is something more than human nature alone could accomplish. God has guided us and sustained and guarded us to the present time, and we are now in a more prosperous circumstances than ever we were. It is in accordance with the revelations of our Savior Jesus Christ, through the Prophet Joseph Smith, that his saints should be tried in all things. This people has been driven from the state of New York, next from Jackson County, then from Clay. The same persecution drove us from Ohio, and the exterminating order of Governor Boggs drove us from Missouri. We left that state willingly, because we were obliged to, and we had the privilege of settling down in the most sickly, deathly swamps of Illinois at Nauvoo. The Gentiles rejoiced, for they thought it would surely kill off the saints, but when we had drained the swamps and made it healthy, we must be driven from our improvements, and in a miraculous manner as the children of Israel were delivered from Pharaoh, we were led to this place. When a ship is at sea, running without the danger of shoals, rocks, or, sh or shallows, she can ride a boisterous sea in safety. The captain and officers all feel contented, but if a sudden squall rises and takes her in the bows, it would very likely dismast the vessel or sink her. We have ridden through a sea of poverty, sickness, disease, and death, but the storm has always been in our rear, and we could sail through it safely, but here there is danger from a heavy headwind. One of my personal friends, Samuel Russell, came to this stand yesterday, and pronounced himself an unbeliever in the revelations of God. We are now in a situation to be tried by a heavy headwind, and it may dismast some part of the vessel. While we were in school, in Kirtland, it was the desire of every elder to qualify himself to be a messenger of peace to all nations, kingdoms, tongues, and people, until the Lord should say it is enough. We have had but little time to preach since then, having been continually broken up and driven about from place to place as vagabonds on the earth, which has made us look out a place where we could make our families comfortable for a season. Some of those elders now want to make themselves rich, but I do not want to see any man having the Holy Spirit have his heart set on farms, cattle, or gold. I say just as soon as by the blessings of the Almighty and the blessings of my brethren I can provide a reasonable means of subsistence for my family, I am ready, and my heart beats high to go and bear this gospel to some people who never heard it, where the gospel never was preached, and where they are in darkness altogether. Then I am on hand, and I trust in the Almighty that I may fulfill the work which God requires at my hands. Elders of Israel and saints of God should always consider what they are about. Never do a thing that the spirit of truth suggests is not right. Moses Martin was yesterday disfellowshipped, and I will warrant that when he put forth his hand to do evil, the still small voice cried out, Moses, that is not right. Never do a thing you are convinced is not right. Every elder must retain his integrity before the Lord, or he will be damned. Remember the words of the Savior, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Consider all that we have and are is at the service of the Almighty, and all that we do to His glory and in His name, and, and everything we put our hands to will prosper. But if we conclude we have suffered enough, and labored enough, and stick stakes as apostates do, that they will go thus far and no farther, they will go down swiftly to destruction and be eternally ruined. I desire to bear testimony of the truth of this work. This people have got to be cultivated until they are governed by the will of the Almighty and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, organized twenty years ago yesterday, is the only true church, and the only possible way of salvation, and I know it. If a man sacrifices his own talents to his own corruption, he seals himself up to ruin. This is the only church that will lead you to celestial glory. I know it is so. Joseph has died for it. Hiram, David, and many others died for it. I know it is the truth. I desire my brethren to treasure these remarks, for I know they were true, and may the Lord God of hosts preserve us all until we arrive in the celestial kingdom of God, which is my prayer. Even so, amen.